Hey guys, welcome to game two between Thebus and White. And if game one was any indicator, this is going to be an exciting one. This is BSL season 13, winner's match game two. Thebus in the upper right hand corner as the blue turn, bottom left hand corner, we have White as the yellow Protoss. This is going to be on Revolver this time at cross spawn. Again, most of the time when I've seen Thebus play, it is kind of those two factory, what makes me think of his plays is just pulling the trigger and going for those containments and the seals off early base pushes. With this particular map, Revolver, I think that's a little bit more difficult to execute, particularly at cross map positions because of the weird natural expansion. Game one though, wow. Just incredible. Phoebus really making white work for it. And I'm wondering, yeah, we'll see how that plays out in the second match. I, honestly, I'm like, with that effort from both of those guys, I'm like, are these, is this going to be like the rematch in the finals potentially? White starting to scout, looks like a pro move. looks like he's gonna scout upper left hand first, rather than doing a cross map scout on his nine pylon. Supply Depot hugging the corner for Thebus. By the way, if you guys have not already seen it, go ahead and check out the Pro League Finals from this last season of BSL. And I guess I kind of want to give the, uh, on the off season, so they've already been able to fund the next, the next season of BSL, so BSL season 14. But I would also like, I don't know, I feel like the, maybe we can figure this out, we can do it as a community where I feel like if we can get a particularly good matchup where we know both players, I mean, granted, across the Pro League, usually, but basically one that's not going to end up a 3-0 uh, situation or one where we're really going to see an intense match and we know it. Maybe we can kind of do a rally thing and get some upvotes on Reddit so people know that Brood War is still happening. On BSL, something along those lines, definitely, like, maybe try to get a rally around uh, subscribers and donations to make sure that, yeah, BSL Season 14, mostly... I want to give a shout out to CRVT. He had a huge donation of $1,800 to make sure to, to put it over the top. But I want to be in a situation in the community where we don't need the big donor like that. White cleverly hiding this probe in the meantime. That's just kind of my thoughts. I would organize it purely if I could, but anyway. SCV's getting a, enough gas for Thebus to go ahead and plop down a factory, a little bit over a factory line. Actually, skipping Marines altogether. Maybe because this is a larger map. So he only has one Marine out. Behind this, Cybernetic Score was built no Zealot initially. And it looks like White can go ahead and grab an Exus. Maybe potentially because of the size of this map and realizing that he wasn't dealing with someone at the upper left-hand corner. Bottom left-hand corner. Phoebus getting scouted out. My thought on that is maybe we could even post it to like gaming instead of just Brood War. Something along those lines, just so people know that the scene's alive still. Try to expand. I don't know. Anyway, <clears throat> food for thought for everybody out there. Trying to think uh, and sneak ways to make this happen. More Marines being pumped out. SCV getting a lot of scouting information. If anybody else has any ideas, let me know as well. Second gateway being added for white. And I think this the one thing for Revolver is, is kind of what I feel about it. Oh, the Marine's actually moving out. And SEV's coming off the line. Phoebus going for a very odd rush that I've never seen. So the three Marines clearing this. This might end up working out, though, because of White's lack of early game units. He's going to have to pull probes to defend. Second gateway is going to come online. Proxy bunker being built. And that looks like it is going to complete. So now the, it's critical that these Marines don't make it up the ramp. But with all the SCVs coming too, this is going to be a challenge to defend. So the Marines starting to press up. Three Marines does beat a Dragoon. The SCV is able to get on top of this initial Dragoon. Keep in mind, this is a long distance to reinforce. A Marine gets in the bunker. One Marine down. The probe's going after a second Marine. That's more battle probes able to get a second Marine. The Dragoon looks like it might get taken out. These probes are isolated. A Vulture to follow. And Phoebus, with some early game pressure, might get a quick win. A very creative, sudden build. Catching White at a position when he just didn't build enough troops. Range still upgrading. It's going to be a bit before two additional Dragoons are produced. Is White going to be in time to, to save his Nexus is the next question. However, Phoebus, I think, got plenty out of it. He's grabbing his command center. It didn't look like he even had to cut probes, or SCV, I should say, in the midst of this. So now the Dragoon 
starting to press out. Granted, now that once range finishes, he'll be able to take down this bunker without too much trouble. The SCV group hugging, uh, repairing behind this. But that Nexus is going to be considerably damaged. More troops are moving out. Looks like the SCV is returning home. That siege tank moving forward. Some mines being planted as well, or mines being upgraded as well. The Dragoons, this is going to be close. Okay, range is finished. So now they can start working on that bunker. But there are two SCVs, so it's going to take a while for that bunker to get taken out. It's at 161, 146 health. Some mines planted. A siege tank moving up as well. This is a lot. Yeah, White has to engage with his Dragoons in the midst of this. Some nice micro. However, the Nexus is wiped out. Putting White in the red as well. So Thebus hasn't won the game yet, but this puts him in a huge position early game. However, Phoebus needs to get siege tanks and defense on his natural expansion. The Marines starting to press forward, and never mind, another Nexus being dropped right behind this. I almost wondered if White was going to drop some additional gateways and apply some pressure. Because here's the thing, Phoebus now in retreat. Maybe if he can get some mines along the way, maybe he's going to play a little bit more defensively because he knows there's mines along the way. There's a robotics facility. Because my concern was a potential counter-attack opportunity for White. But knowing the vultures are out there, knowing that mines could be trailing along the way, yeah, I think this is the right play. Go ahead and reestablish that Nexus. However, now he's playing from a huge, basically like losing your foot and still trying to uh, kickbox. Two siege tanks at the natural expansion. Phoebus feeling very comfortable knowing that with those vultures and those mines that he can macro up behind this. Tacking on an additional factory. He did all that with one factory and one barracks, basically. Very impressive. Yeah, not a rush I think I have uh, seen before. Dragoons sneaking out, trying to take out some of these troops. Looks like there is going to be a mine to block out a quick third. That would have been a way that White might have been able to sneak back into this is just grab a double Nexus really fast. Worker counts 31 to 20. And actually what I'd like to see from Thebus in the midst of this is just send out a Vulture, check out all those expansions, and make sure that, yeah, White doesn't sneak anything in the midst of this. Second base back up. White's got some work to do. Third factory, fourth factory being planted. And is Thebus just going to go for the, the kill maneuver? He's planting down some turrets just in case there was a shuttle drop. First observer being produced for White. White's still rolling off two gateway. There's also a Marine going ahead and camping at that 3 o'clock location. Lurker Egg's opening up. But honestly, Thebus almost maneuvering as though he wants to go for a mid-game five factory, maybe even uh, four factory push. Maybe it's just to make sure those vultures have more room that they can kind of sneak out of uh, towards the natural. Have a little bit more room to work with. But anyway, Phoebus in a commanding position now. Ten workers up on two bases. The Observer is sneaking down. Yeah, they want to, So it looks like White's plan from here is to go ahead and try to grab a quick third. But knowing the quality of Phoebus's vultures, yeah, I take it back. He's just, yeah, he's going to roll. Clearing that, it's going to roll off four factories. Now, granted, so, so uh, the observer's going to... I think it's going to see this. Is it going to see this? Okay, it does see it on the corner. You can not siege from the low ground, but this is still going up into high ground. It's challenging to press into this. So Phoebus is going to have his work cut out for him. Some additional gateways being tacked on. Looks like Phoebus was making maneuvers potentially to take out that base. The Dragoon's actually going to the low ground to engage these siege tanks. That's unfortunate. I would have liked to see the engagement from the high ground getting right on top of this. Yeah, and I think Thebus overcommitted here. And paid for it. It does delay this Nexus slightly. Looks like some Vulture is going to be able to sneak in. Oh, some Dragoon's face planning into the midst of this. Thebus does a really good job of planning those backline mines. But yeah, getting a little bit... If I was going to say there was a weakness in Phoebus' display that I've seen thus far, it's like overcommitting on pushes that are a little bit... Uh, it's not just risky. It's uh, a little bit ill-advised, I guess. Especially because that really got scouted. It looks like a Vulture able to get at least one kill, but the probes have none of that. I like White's battle probes. There's the hero right here. So that's actually going to allow... With that push, actually, White takes the supply lead. He's actually even on workers, and now he's grabbing a third. 
that's not to say that Phoebus is out of this, but I feel like because of that push, a lot of the early game advantage that Phoebus was able to capitalize on was uh, has not been erased, but certainly mitigated. Observer now pressing forward to go ahead and see what's out there. Fifth factory being tacked on, a sixth factory being tacked on, and a command center as well. So it looks like Phoebus wants to go ahead and flood out a lot of vultures and use those to try to yeah, pin white back. It looks like that is going to be a successful ploy at this stage. A couple probes having some trouble here, but... Okay, one probe getting taken out. The Dragoon's not very responsive at dealing with that, and that's going to allow some additional kills. This is Danger Town. More battle probes. This is Danger Town, where Phoebus needs to be very careful moving those vultures out that he doesn't end up over committing with them. Because this is, again, that flash comment where it's like you push out too many vultures and then you're not getting a lot accomplished with them. I think just making sure those mines are out there and that white has to stay in a defensive posture will be sufficient. Natural expansion pretty well defended. Nexus up as well. Now the vulture's starting to flood across the map. The observer going to go ahead. This is amazing timing. Uh, this shows you uh, some game sense and really knowing his, his play. Phoebus seeing the probes move across, looking to see if there are units in the way. Really wanted to take a shot at that 6 o'clock location. Looks like he's thinking, second, uh, thinking better of it. The Observer sees that base being planted. The Observer also going to be able to sneak up and see the vultures forward. The Dragoon starting to clear some of that. Now Phoebus getting those mines back down while he can before going ahead and pulling those vultures out. But Phoebus, once again, moving out on the field with some siege tanks this time. And I almost wonder if he's going to try to take shots across that bridge. And I think they have managed to sneak under. I'm wondering if he was concerned about a threat at the 1 o'clock and was looking... No, he's still pressing. So Siege Tank's moving out. It looks like they want to go ahead and establish the low ground here and maybe attack and deal with that 5 o'clock to go ahead and take a, a lead. Thebus being very aggressive. The probe is going to see all of this. The army's out of position, though. Now it's responding. But let's see. We saw how quickly Thebus was able to work and take down a Nexus previously. The probe's actually pulling out, so they're at least going to be okay. The rest of this, yeah, engaging. Keep in mind, this is high ground to low ground engagement. The Vulture's right there to engage the Zealot dropping. Zealot dropping. It sounds like a, a bird poop there. Comsats. But this is a difficult engagement point for Thebus with what's there. Still, that looks like that assimilator might get taken out. This is disrupting. Oh, a huge mind drag. Did that kill a lot of probes as well? No, just... This is also allowing Phoebus to go ahead as he's macroing behind this. I like Phoebus' ability to macro remain aggressive and keep it, uh, just keep up the pressure in the midst of this. He's continuing to assail that. He does have that third base up and running, which is giving him a strong economic lead in the midst of this. And actually, this might, yeah, this might be the game-ending maneuver because Thebus continued to press into it. White not engaging, not finding locations to engage, it looks like. So really, yeah, so Siege Tank's on the low ground. The probe's looking for room to see if they can mine, thinking better of it. Some Dark Templar moving up. <clears throat> but that Siege Tank going to try to take out that cannon. Yeah, just kind of picking, uh, pecking away at this. Trying to get this uh, Nexus taken out. DT's mind-dragging across the low ground. Eating a, a bit of fire there. Observer able to wipe that out. White now re-engaging. Does have some Dragoons in the shuttle. Looks like he is... Well, not able to mind drag into that top siege tank, but he is able to deal with those back ledge siege tanks. He's going to be able to clear this attack up, but... Phoebus, with a huge supply lead in the midst of this, was able to defend that, and with a counter-attack, while White was out of position at the natural expansion with some vultures. Phoebus is everywhere. Just continuing to... This is, yeah, definitely very aggressive next-level play, in my opinion. The shuttle moving out has nothing. That's just occupying a Goliath, and it looks like that's going to get wiped out. So an attempted mind drag. The Dark Templar is going to get he's going to get here, but not a lot happening there otherwise. The Vulture is able to engage and keep that third base from mining, and Phoebus continuing with the aggression, continuing with the huge supply lead, just... Unlimited aggression here from Phoebus. I love this style of play. It is really fun to watch. More vultures, more siege tanks peeling in, so he's not giving White any breathing room. This almost feels like a statement from game one. Like, yeah, yeah, you won that one, but I don't feel like that was deserved. So I'm just going to press in and bully my way through 
taking this next match. More vultures peeling off, looking for an engagement. So basically, okay, if you want to try to reinforce and try to grab that third, I'm just going to press through. This is definitely one of those matches where I'm like, man, Teisagi, you know? It's like Terran's so strong. How do you deal with this? The Dragoon's engaging those vultures right there, but White still locked the two bases. Phoebus looks like he's going to be able to wipe out that six o'clock. And this is, this poor observer is just seeing all those mines like, hey guys, why aren't we spawning this? More factories being tacked on for Thebus. The one small mercy is it's just level one weapons and the, it looks like there has been a delay in additional upgrades. An SC, a battle SCV on the front lines. The Vulture's continuing to press uh, test that natural expansion. This base is now taken out. And in the midst of this, Thebus not pulling the same shenanigans as white shenanigans is going to go ahead and grab that 3 o'clock base. So he's like, I'm going to expand, attack, macro, and everything behind this and make sure that, yeah, that you don't have an opportunity to get back into this. Dragoon's trying to sneak up to that 9 o'clock to maybe take that base. But in the meantime, Phoebus completely exiting with the rest and regathering his troop, maybe, to go for another push, grabbing another base in the upper left. When you get ahead, get more ahead. And this is, I think, yeah, the aggressive... If you're going to back off, that's the way to do it. Yeah, just tack on absolutely everything. We do have a Stargate up, but this is basically two base Arbiter. White still sitting at 49. Uh, probes in the midst of this. Desperately trying to grab that 9 o'clock. Phoebus picking off and engaging this army. Which is uh, completely unupgraded, by the way, from White. Looks like there was a probe that managed to sneak in that upper left-hand corner. But Phoebus now kind of doing a... Almost like an aggressive hug right here with the, the arm. It's like that, the arm pulling out and drawing the person in. Nine o'clock location. Looks like it is not long for life. And I think that is certainly going to be GG. Phoebus controlling this match. Like he had one misstep, but otherwise controlling this match top to, top to bottom. So I suppose if you're going to trade like an occasional aggressive misstep for just, yeah. And not even, no GG. I assume maybe GG in chat. I'll give it up to him in that regard. But White, I would be frustrated in this match as well. Phoebus just being blanketing and overwhelming here. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Moving on to the third match. Thanks for listening.